Hey there, everyone. How's it going? It's Thursday night. It's it's actually not as late as normal. It's it's only about 10.30 uh, p.m. on the East Coast. There's a lot of games still going on, but I've been able to prepare Friday. And even though this video is probably going to go long because all my videos go long, but I, I'm going to get to the point kind of quick on all the sports and then we're going to hang out and talk about some things and some analysis about betting. But I want to just get everybody in and out who wants to see what the picks kind of starting are for tomorrow. You're looking at the Google sheet. And if you if you comment, you know, on the videos or you're really interested in getting up to date information on on all the algorithms, that's basketball, that's hockey uh, here. I, I'm in this file sometimes at night if things are going on and I am paying attention to it, making updates and putting confirmed goalies and stuff in here. So everything changes and it's dynamic in the Google sheet. And uh, I sell a subscription to this as well as copies of the file, but the link, believe it or not, if you read all this and stared at the screen and typed that in, I think it works for you because the file's kind of open right now because uh, some people don't have Gmail email addresses. And so I want everyone to still have access to this one. So you can almost type it in and get it. But really, if you, you want to copy of stuff and try to update these files yourself, you should pay the 50 bucks and subscribe for November. Uh, and also the Google sheet will eventually get locked off and only apply to people that have proper validated email addresses to look at it, especially when we get into college basketball. So there's a ton of stuff going on and I have a lot of, uh, a lot of different things highlighted here and showing up on the screen. I've got hockey, I've got basketball, I've got football, which is going on right now. <laughs> Just looked at the football score. It ain't over yet, but it is 21 to 17 because we were having fun trying to choreograph football games in our video and we're almost exactly there what you think philadelphia gonna gonna burn the clock here come down and get a field goal make this 24 17 and just so they can it, you know we can almost hit it with like a 5.1 magnifier maybe Let's see what happens no didn't move yet Hold on i think there's a chance that we'll be able to yeah there it is. So if, if they walk down and get a field goal, um, this magnifier might have a perfect score if there's no more scoring in the game, but don't count on anything in NFL other than it to be gut wrenching. I mean, Houston could still win this game because obviously it's within a four point game in the fourth quarter. There's about 13 minutes left now. So that's football until we find out what more of a score is toward the end of this video. Let's talk about, um, NBA and then after NBA we'll talk about tomorrow's NBA because we're not going to talk about this weekend's football yet but we'll talk about tomorrow's NBA and then we'll go over to hockey and talk betting so that looks like two losses today under the current um current season stats that we use for basketball these margins are really low so so that's not some all that unpredictable what I did find interesting was that when you went to last season stats the teams flipped one of the teams flipped. Um, Golden State went a lot higher up, but they still lost. They had huge margins in last year. That that was kind of intriguing was, wow, last year these teams were huge favorites, which is probably why this line was here. But this season, not so much. And uh, you can say that you kind of are getting the Golden State game correctly in the current version here when you refresh and see this. Because... It's all the way down here at a 3.8% margin. That not only is that below 10, it's the lowest one of the game. The spread cover was negative five, which means that when spread cover is negative five, that means that the, the odds makers say the spread seven and a half. We think the other team being Orlando was going to cover the spread, not Golden State when there's a negative spread cover right here. So, so that's not a bad game, but it's still not a winning that. You need Oklahoma City to win. They were coming back, but they didn't do it. And they lost by more than they did not cover their six and a half. And you'll see in my betting that cost me my one bet on basketball today. I didn't play the other game, but I did play Oklahoma City plus six and a half, I think. And they do not win. Oh, okay, well, it happens. Doesn't win every day. Let's talk about the fourth. It's so tough to use the mouse when I share the screen. It's weird. Come on. It's funny. I, I like can't click on the proper area. It's weird. It's, it's like it's reading my mouse clicks a little bit over to the left. So I have to like plan on clicking. There we go. I think I got it. Um, so this is the fourth. And let's hide other stuff. And we'll, we'll look at both different stats. A second. Well, this makes it really difficult. 
it's really tough to do anything with the mouse like this. Uh, I guess I won't hide it. We'll just talk about it. We'll make this easier. Um, so under current season stats, you know, what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll generally copy this and paste it right into the Google Sheet for tomorrow. So that if you have access to the Google Sheet, you can just go in and see this static even when I'm not doing videos, even when I'm not uh, no sending emails or whatever going on. We're just going to paste it right down here. And you're going to be able to get what this look is in current season stats, even though it's going to get updated again tomorrow and it's going to be more current tomorrow. So there's not really a whole lot to talk about tonight except glancing at it. Let's wrap our text to make it look okay. So this is what with current season stats, you do see some underdogs showing up here. Jazz, it likes the jazz. It likes San Antonio, uh, but I'll see if they're recovering from injuries or not. It likes the Hornets potentially at plus 520, but they're injured. So we got to see what their injuries are. Uh, but then, then you start getting below 10% margin here. So, but this uh, Spurs over Clippers is interesting if they get healthier, we'll find out. That's under current season stats. I want to do one more thing because it's still worthy of looking at it. And there's no reason not to, which is let's change this to last season stats and refresh. And we get the look in last season and we'll copy that as well so that you can see it in the Google sheet and do some comparisons without having to have the Excel file. And this is how easy it is for me to update it for everyone. This is why I like this so much better than an email list because I can just, I don't have to worry about sending multiple emails throughout the day anytime anything happens. Why is there, oh yeah. So everything just gets updated here and there's a tracker about what we did. So you can actually go back to previous versions and stuff if you wanna see what things looked like before. In last year's version, uh, Golden State is an underdog against Pelicans and stuff, but this year is generally gonna be better and, and it has been getting better this current season set up right here, okay? So that is your look at basketball for tomorrow. Of course, check the Google Sheet and subscribe to get current picks for Friday other, that are better than that. Now let's talk about hockey, which has been an enormous day today and is continuing to go on right now. Oh, Philadelphia made it 29-17 in football. So that, they're up by more now. So if you're taking Houston to cover, maybe you're going to lose. It's the NFL, glad I'm not paying attention to it. Did not make one bet on NHL. These are the bets that I made on Thursday. Uh, I did two round robins for a total of 49 plus 38 bucks. It was like 87 bucks or something. And I actually flirted with a lot of money. And I'll talk about my picks as we go through hockey. This one, especially, I just lost the under here because this game tied went to overtime. But that's okay because I bet the tie in the Carolina Tampa Bay game here and hit it. And had I hit the Washington Detroit one, boy, we would have made a lot of money. We would have made another several hundred dollars. And boy, if Vegas had covered, they were up 5-2 or 5-1. If they just covered one and a half, how much more money would that have been? <laughs> Take a look at this. $2,000 that would have been. And this game's actually not even over. So potentially they could get to six. This was a 7000 something dollar potential payout on 38 bucks. And while it's not over, it does look like that's a loss. It looks, and we know we lost, uh, this, this game did not end a tie, although it was tied with three minutes left. And unfortunately, just Detroit scored in one and Vegas somehow doesn't cover, right? And that brings this way down right now to probably 130. But the Habs, the, the Habs game is not over. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's 2-2. So I should not say the Habs are a win because they're not a win yet. And the Islanders are only up 4-2 and might not cover one and a half. So let's, let's talk about what's going on in NHL. So current scores of things are the Islanders are up 4-2. Boston wins. We'll talk about that game. Nashville's up 3-0. Edmonton is up 2-1. 3-0. Um, Dallas is up 3-0. Not surprised. And Seattle, the Kraken won 4-0. All right, so that Anaheim and Vancouver have not started yet. No, there's 0-0, there's zero, zero, and Florida San Jose has not started yet. So what that leaves is this, um, which is looking like 7-2 and two right now, given where the scores are. 
And you, you, and look at this. I mean, just look at how awesome hockey has been today. I mean, hockey really deserves to be discussed, even though it's still going on and not ever, because it's already done some amazing things. Here's the Excel version, right? And, it's, and the Excel version is dynamic because it has to do with streaks and how teams are playing over here. And that comes into the calculation. And so things change, like pick ranks and stuff change whenever we enter results for the game. But what the good thing about the Google sheet is, which is right here, we have an NHL rendering or a snapshot at a given point in time. Looks like it's at 1014, you know, 20 minutes ago. And what it has is it has frozen pick ranks from earlier in the day that you would have looked at when you were making decisions about wagering on this if you had had access to the Google sheet at the time. And those picks are number one being Vegas here, number two being the Islanders, right? Number three being Boston, underdog line, underdog line. I mean, whoa, those two, right? Four being Edmonton, who's winning right now, 2-1. Five being Calgary, but I stayed away from Calgary. And I just had a text message with a buddy of mine who's like, what the hell's wrong with Calgary tonight? And I was like, I saw this. I saw this 33% and this drop in win percentage here for Calgary, which is also noticeable in here. Right. I know I'm bouncing around choppily on the video here, but I saw this. I saw this orangeness here and I was like, hmm, they're not playing well. And I go, and the line's bad. Go, I'm going to skip it. And that's what I like about seeing this, is seeing teams that aren't playing well. And all right, so, so good things are happening. Go down the line and what awesome things happen. Vegas freaking doesn't cover, but still basically owns this game and wins. You bet them to win, they won. Carolina and Tampa Bay, I bet the tie. <laughs> it was so close. It was a 3-3 tie that Carolina wins. Even though it said take Tampa Bay because they're streaking better, that there's are both good teams, as you can see, and Carolina wins it in the shootout. The score was just spot on here. This score was fantastic. This is a great prediction. And I'm glad I bet the tie and won it a great line. I got like a tie plus 305 here and hit that. If you made that as a straight bet, if you move these picks over to straight bets, I put them right here. And they also make, they double your money so far. Although the Habs game, not over. You might lose the Habs game. It is not over. It's 2-2 right now. So stuff is not over. Right? I shouldn't say things are over yet, but um, but some games are over, and this is good. Washington loses to Detroit, but it's a low-scoring game. I bet under six and a half. I said, why not? It looks like not. You know, they might make it 3-3, three, three, but they'll probably make it 2-2, two, two, which is probably what it should have been if the Caps get a score on power play. Doesn't happen. Caps lose, but it is a low-scoring game. And the pick, pick ranks were way down here, saying it was close, and actually puts it in favor of Detroit in the Excel file, but what did it do in this file? In the Google Sheet, it had it in favor of the Caps because they were playing a little better over the last 15 days than Detroit. So it actually was it was saying take the Caps even though – and in score, yep. All the things say Caps. That's why it's deceptive sort of to look at this sometimes because even though this is not changing, this stuff is changing. So – and that's because it's related to streets, the stuff off to the right. So sometimes I, I hide it. But I use the win-loss as related to the adjusted power. These are the two that it's looking at when it's doing win-loss. It's not looking at the actual score even when it's doing the win-loss. It's not doing this. It's not looking at this. It's not looking at the margins. Not at it. This win-loss is only looking at these adjusted power comparisons when it's saying, who did we think was going to win? We thought Washington was going to win because they're at 30 compared to 26. So they had four percentage points more. That's why when they lost the game, it shows up as a loss here. Now, Boston and the Rangers, underdog line. This was a really high pick. I took them reverse line minus one and a half. That's what that says here. Boston minus one and a half plus three. They actually cleared minus two and a half. You couldn't even bet that on FanDuel. They don't offer minus two and a half in this situation for Boston. But I got plus 280. And I wasn't even in doubt in the last 10 minutes of the game. It came back in the third, blew up, just took it. They are playing great hockey. Algorithm shows that. That's a huge payout. It's a huge payout for a hockey game, right? I mean, seriously. Talk about straight bets. 280 on, on a team that is how good, right? They're playing this great. They're just winning everything. The rare 100% line right here. 
which means I haven't updated tomorrow's schedule yet, or they're not playing tomorrow. It's the only reason they could be at 100% because there's no game that we're projecting for them. They already won it <laughs> for the night. So good for Boston. They're playing excellent. Look at the score ranges. I mean, it's really unbelievable sometimes how, how good this thing is. Uh, all right, next, Islanders. What's the score of that game? It's still 4-2 with two minutes left. Um, oh, Montreal lost to Winnipeg. Oh, <laughs> yep, that's my bad. It's okay, though. Let's see how bad that affects uh, our payout here. So Winnipeg has just won. That is going to hurt my bet. I should have taken them plus one and a half, clearly, and I didn't. So let's go to my bet and we'll see what happens to my round robin. Um, first of all, the Habs lose. So this is now a loss. So straight bet wise, you still profit. <laughs> you still make 59% on your money, even not hitting the LA Chicago game. If the Islanders hold on to win by two and they are winning by two with 2.3 minutes left. We'll see over here. You do not win this. So instead of 130 bucks, you only get 23. I am ending up being a loser on the night. You can see how I like not betting a lot of money when I bet like this. Because we went from having a shot at thousands of dollars with some very, very close things at the end of the game, some nail biting things like the Habs trying to win a game as it's tied, like this game trying to stay a tie, and like Vegas trying to cover and probably put an empty net in or something. I didn't see it. And this game's not over yet, actually, even though it's 14 minutes left and it's one to one, it's probably losing. Uh, there's a chance they could get to three to three, you know, maybe or maybe four two, but generally no, it's probably not winning. And the Islanders game are now they're now up five two, so that's good. That means this is probably going to win. But it's really exciting to 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 have a shot at a lot after only betting a little. But then you don't get there, and we're going to lose this one too because we lost Oklahoma City, and because I should have taken the tie here instead. But Islanders win, Bruins win. This stays under. So I lose a little money today. I lose $4.74. And I lose $15.25. But I actually had a lot of fun watching these games. And I had a shot up until the end of the night. And there's a chance there could be a bunch of goals at the end that could bring us back to positive territory. And it would be worth like 60 or 70 bucks or something, right? Um, if, uh, if they could score a bunch of goals. But they probably won't. And actually, even if they push, I'd get something if they got to six. I would get more money because I wouldn't lose. So it's really cool as you run the simulations to see what your payouts are. And it's not a winning night again for you, but that's okay. I hope it was a winning night for you because a lot of interesting things clearly win straight bet wise for sure. And reading through the algorithm um, makes it, you know, easy to find a lot of good paying things. So yeah, there are some more games going on. There's a tomorrow hockey which I prepared as well. Right here, there's only two games. And apparently I didn't put goalies in there. Let's fix that. Let's do an X look up and fix that. Uh, how many games are there tomorrow? They're right here. I'm just gonna throw in some goalies real quick. And that will give us some projections, even though we're obviously gonna update tomorrow. So I just write a little X lookup formula that looks up the team and kicks back the first boy that shows up on the list, even though that's not an optimal way to do it to get the right person. Uh, it, it does at least get you something to do projections. Let's see what happens. Cube. Get rid of this, get rid of this, and this will show us the Friday picks with no goalie status. And it says that Colorado beats Columbus line is bad. Um, and it says that Buffalo beats Carolina. How about that? Carolina playing a back-to-back -back game. Buffalo playing excellent. Says they would beat them, but the margin is really low. So Buffalo to win is going to be your underdog. It looks like tomorrow. It's probably going to be that way if these are the goal teams. Although it probably won't be Anderson, actually. Because Anderson just played this, this long game tonight that was a draw. So it's probably going to be the other goalie. So let's grab Carolina's other goaltender. Who is Antti Ranta? I just heard him on the radio today. Um, so we're going to throw Antti Ranta in there instead. Right here. And refresh. 
and he's actually got a better rating than Anderson somehow. Amazing. I'm amazed. And it makes this game even closer. I'm astonished at that. I thought Anderson would have a better rating than him. But we don't have current stats from today in there yet. So that's the look at, at, uh, at NHL with a lot of stuff still going on right now today. But I'm, I'm happy with a lot of things that I'm seeing out of this. I mean, it has Seattle. I mean, it has Seattle at plus 145. Let's see what the Google Sheet said on that real quick. Seattle, yeah, it was the 13th pick, but it had them putting up three goals. And it had them winning by adjusted power. Amazing. Amazing, right? I mean, you see, that's, how many underdogs is it picking off tonight? Seattle, the Islanders, Boston. Really close game with Washington Detroit doesn't get it right though. Vegas wins, so an underdog loses. This one was a toss-up game, and it basically said tie, but it kind of picked. It's, it's a tough call there, but look at the underdogs. Montreal unfortunately doesn't win, but they didn't pick them anyway. That was me looking, wanting too much St. Louis to, to happen there. Not over. Wow, I mean, just wow. It didn't pick Nashville over Calgary, unfortunately. That would have been interesting if they could pull that off. And it has Dallas at the eighth pick, and they're winning. And for this Florida-San Jose game, it actually says take San Jose. What? Why? Because they're playing better than Florida is. Huh. That makes me think plus one and a half is acceptable. Because they might lose 3-2 anyway, it says. And, and the more projection says, yeah, it's like barely 3-2. Like maybe a 2-2 tie sort of. Um or if that's the way it goes, but uh, that game's still starting in a little bit. So anyway, um, they just a lot going on, a lot to talk about. Let's get a uh, almost final NFL score. So it's probably not almost final. There's eight minutes left. It's still 29-17, so they're outscoring a little bit. So we'll put this thing back to five because we didn't get it exactly right. But that happens. All right. So um, anyway, that's the update for Friday, guys. Like I said, purchase subscriptions. I'll put you on the, the access to the Google Sheet if you don't type it in and want to look at it that way. And also, you'll get a copy of these Excel files and learn how to use them with, in conjunction with RotoWire and download stats and be able to update this stuff yourself so that you can not rely on me and have access to it. All the information you want, whenever you want, and you can do it and you can craft your bets because I'm very happy with even not winning money today because... I got this done all last night and then I came back here after being out all day, uh, came back at like seven and made just this $80 bet. And it looks like it's going to lose, but it wasn't a big deal. And it was fun watching. And that's about as much effort as I'm going to put into this every day, because wait till you see what happens when college basketball starts. There's going to be so many games. I don't even know what I'm going to do with keeping track of scores or whether I'm going to be doing a Google sheet add on um, once once everyone who's paid, like I have this exclusive uh, November subscription for college basketball, which I've sold four of them so far. And you'll see, cause I'm not going to do public videos about the games, but eventually I'll have another Google sheet. And I did have one last year that had all the games and there's like a hundred games in a day. So we have to kind of use the community to update scores sometimes. Cause there's not really an automated way to get them when the games are going on at night, it's too, it's going too fast all over the place, or at least I haven't figured out a good automated way to get them. Um, and also like doing them at the end of the night, like team names are not always the same. It's a real mess, but it's going to be helpful in the beginning. And then after the first month, I'm actually not going to record that information in general much anymore, especially on big days. Like I'm just going to skip Saturdays and stuff because there's going to be days where there's 150 games. I, it's easy to prepare the algorithm uh, fairly easy to prepare the algorithm with the snapshot it is not easy to update all the scores and in, in a Google sheet or something that takes time and it takes eye power and it is annoying. So you don't have to update all the scores in your file if you don't want to. And you'll see how that works as we get into it. Cause we're only four days away, I believe from the start of college basketball, there are no lines yet. And um, when there are, we will discuss that. That will be a video because because I have a little talk about college basketball as we get started. All right, so a lot going on. Good luck Friday, everyone. If you do one thing, if you're still with us, if you do one thing, it's apparently take Buffalo tomorrow. 
but Ranta playing well. Maybe Buffalo plus one and a half in that. In the NBA situation, we don't have a lot of stuff, but we're seeing current season stats is the one we care about more. And we like to say, well, stuff above 10% margin wins. So that means you're focusing here and you got to pay attention to some injuries, but it says things like potentially the Spurs, but you know, what are their injuries and the jazz that if they are healthy, like they are, I mean, get a better entry for it. That's a 19% margin. They beat the Lakers. So that becomes kind of a number one pick because the Cleveland team is obviously has a health, something going on there, whether they're sick or what's up, but that also is not as good a line. So we'll be interested to see what happens here and whether the shorts Charlotte Hornets can get healthier here at this crazy plus five twenty, but these margins are below 10%. So you probably only want to take teams with a lot of points in this situation. We'll see how the injuries are. All right. Good luck, everybody. May all your picks be winning.